Well, um, the TSA presentation first. So that's what we're doing now. So Ms. Lynn, it's all yours. Thank you. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Alicia Lynn and I am the um, TSA advisor at the Newfound Memorial Middle School. I wanted to show a brief video just to explain a little bit more about what TSA is all about. The Technology Student Association, TSA, is a national organization for middle and high school students interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. TSA provides curriculum integrated STEM experiences to affiliated schools through its competitions as well as its leadership and career awareness activities. A recognized career and technical student organization, TSA offers more than 70 STEM related competitions to its membership. These competitions can be integrated into classroom instruction and are the basis for entries at regional, state, or national conferences. TSA student members learn and practice 21st century leadership skills using lessons and activities accessible on a password protected site. Also available are technology based resources such as videos and PowerPoint presentations. Through TSA, Members stay connected by interacting with other students in the TSA community. When teachers incorporate TSA into their STEM curriculum, they describe how easy the resources are to integrate and include in lesson plans. They note the high engagement level of their students, and teachers convey that being a TSA chapter advisor is a rewarding professional experience. TSA's affordable membership will enhance the opportunity for STEM experiences in your school. A designated TSA chapter advisor simply provides an affiliation invoice to begin the process. Access to all program materials starts as soon as payment is received. If available, local CTE Perkins funding may be used. Thank you for considering a TSA chapter as part of your school year. Okay, and then I have a brief, I'm going to talk a little bit about our chapter. <laughs> Hi everybody, so um, I moved up to New Hampshire uh, three years ago and I started the uh, TSA chapter here at the middle school two years ago. This is our second year doing TSA. Um, I have not always been a teacher. I've only been teaching for about six years. The reason I am a teacher is because of my involvement in TSA. I got involved in TSA 15 years ago as a parent, um, and I fell in love with it. And the reason why I fell in love with it is we do so many different events that there really truly is something for every child's talent. We've got the artistic kids that can do things like digital photography. We've got the really high tech kids that can do the coding. We've got the kids that like to build stuff. They can do um, the dragsters or the, or the planes. The really intellectual kids that like to debate or have speech. So there really truly is something for every kid's talent and that's what I love about it. If I can get a kid in the door, I can find something that they're gonna be successful at. I met so many great tech ed teachers and so many students along the way that that's why I left my career in healthcare, went to become, go back to school to get certified to teach and became a tech ed teacher. So we started the chapter last year, or two years ago. The first year we went to the state conference, we only had six students attend, but they did earn eight different awards in six different events. This were the results from that, uh, you, that was our, our results. So we had eight different placements in, a, in um, but only those six students, so they did a phenomenal job. We placed in digital photography, dragster design, problem solving, flight challenge, Kiva plank challenge, and mechanical engineer. This year, we had, um, oh, I'm sorry, and then I forgot, we, uh, we didn't have a national conference that year, we had a, a hybrid regional conference, so I took a couple of our projects to the regional conference, I took the photography and the dragsters, and we placed at the regional conference too. First place in digital photography and first and second in dragster. So that was pretty cool. This year at the state conference, we had 16 students attend the conference. So we have grown. We've gone some, from six to 18 members. 16 of those students were able to attend the state conference. We earned 13 awards in nine different events this year. 
Um, so again, digital photography, first and second, dragster design, first, second, and third, swept the dragsters. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanical engineering, first and third. Coding, we had third. Technology bowl, we had a second. Prepared speech, we had a third. System control technology, we had a third. Children's story, we had a third. And challenging technology issues, which is debate, we had a second place winner. Um, so they have qualified in multiple events to get to the national conference. It's my hope that we can get there, but it's a daunting um, process because it is rather expensive. So we are actively trying to raise the money for the kids to be able to go to the national conference. Uh, it's a, it's a life-altering experience going to that national conference. My first national conference is when I got hooked <laughs> and why I'm a teacher now. Um, so I, I may, I've been to uh, 12 of the last 15 years national conferences. So it's an amazing experience that I hope these students will be able to have. I'm going to ask a couple of my students and, and a parent to come up and talk a little bit about uh, their experiences with TSA. So first up, we have Isaac Bernard. Isaac, come on up. <clears throat> Oh, ow, ow, ow. Wait, is this working? Oh, so yeah, it's not it's actually. It's not I don't. For people I don't. At home, yeah. So. Oh. We can hear okay. You. We can hear you fine. Okay. So, hello, I'm Isaac Barnard. I'm in seventh grade, and this is my second year in TSA. The reason why I like TSA is because it allows me to compete against others all around, from the state to the, to the country. The, no, to the country. It allows me to to meet others from different schools, and make new friends. I also won three tr tr trophies last year. Here. Uh, I love competing in dragster design because it allowed me to make my very own one dragster. I'm looking forward to next year. <laughs> next up, we have uh, Clara Woodward. Clara, come on up. Hello, my name is Clara. I am in seventh grade. I have been in TSA for two years. TSA is a fun program with many learning opportunities. I can say that participating in TSA, I have more experiences in multiple areas. I, I know more skills from when I'm an adult, for when I'm an adult. For example, I have learned time management skills and worked with new tools and materials. Recently, my friend and I earned third place in this state TSA competition for our project on children's stories. We planned, field tested, wrote, and bound, and illustrated our own book. It was a great experience to understand the work that goes into a book, even the documentation. My friend and I agree that it was a rewarding experience. I found TSA very fun. My first year of doing TSA, not only did it not many people did it because it was new to our school, but this year I've, I've found, I have seen it grow and I've seen it thrive. We, we are proud to represent our school. Our school is proud to say that, that they have a state level, that they have state level champions. We are, are excited for the opportunity to represent our school at the national level, level next month as well. I hope that I hope when I get to high school, our district will have TSA as well as I would love to continue my growth here. Thank you. Um, next, I have a parent um, speaking from a parent's perspective on TSA, and that's um, Ms. Bridget Bernard. Hi. I am Bridget Barnard, like she said, and I am Isaac's mom. And when he came to middle school last year in sixth grade, um, I think everybody knows it's kind of a challenge when you're changing schools and learning new things. Um, he decided that he wanted to get into TSA and robotics. And it was so nice to be able to see him coming home excited about something. He'd found his place and excited about going and working and put, doing, planning his projects and excited for the competitions that were coming up. So it was really nice to be able to have this program and I'm very appreciative that my son has that and other students have that opportunity as well. Um, as a parent, I've also had the opportunity to attend two state conferences with them as a parent. And some of the skills that they learn, they're not just learning technology, they're not just learning science, they're learning other things like, as Clara said, time management, they're learning planning, they're learning to work with other students that either they know 
the ones that we that come with them or the first year we went um for the keep up challenge they were paired up with students from other schools so they were thrown into these situations with somebody they had no idea and given a challenge that they had to work together to come up with and um additionally in live competitions you know things don't always go as planned so they have problem solving that they are learning and they're learning um to work through things like for example in the uh the glider challenge if your balsam wood breaks what do you do because you're building a plane on site in a time limit um you don't have more supplies with you you have to improvise so these are skills that they're learning through these competitions organically and their skills that will, they'll take with them for the rest of their life so again i'm so glad that these kids have this opportunity i know i look forward to isaac having being in the program again next year and hopefully in the future so thank you So TSA not only offers competitive events, but there's opportunity for developing leadership skills too. Because it's a nationally recognized career and technical student organization, there are chapter officers, state officers, and national officers. So the last person I'm gonna to ask to come up and speak is Ms. Hannah Upperman. She is our uh, chapter president. She's gonna come and speak next. Hello. My name is Hannah Upperman, and I am the current president of Newfound Memorial Middle School's TSA chapter. I have been in this program for two years, and I have made many valuable memories. This organization has helped me develop my creative talents, craftsmanship, and leadership traits. From growing in size to growing in intelligence, this program has been an outlet for me and so many others to grow our artistic talents. It has fostered my interest in digital photography and computer programming. It has also helped me see my options for future careers that connect work with the creative arts. It is a truly valuable learning experience and has made me see what I'm capable of when connecting technical skills and mixing my eye for art into it. I remember that the one thing that kept me going strong is the support I received from peers and Mrs. Lynn. Not only has the program helped people become better, more efficient craftsmen, but it has also helped me see that I have an eye for photography that cannot be taught. Without this organization, I am nothing but another ordinary teenage girl living in a really fast-paced, changing world. <laughs> but with it, I am Hannah Upperman, the two-time first place winner of the TSA Photography Challenge, second place winner of the TSA Dragster Challenge in 2023, and the budding leader that I wanted to become. But as I stand and speak to you all about how amazing this program is, I can't help but feel a very big weight of sadness on my shoulders because I realize that as soon as the school year starts and I walk into the high school, I will not have this organization to rely on or to look forward to at the end of the school day. So before I give attention back to Ms. Lynn, I need to say that this is an amazing program for kids to take part in. It provides a creative challenge for those students that love art, technology, engineering, and problem solving. I'm asking for the funding of this program at the high school so we can continue to challenge ourselves and compete against other districts such as Bedford, Guilford, and Laconia to improve mental health through crea creativity and to show the world how smart, talented, and motivated Newfound Bears are. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to, um, to have us come and speak to you today. I'm very proud of the kids. I, I'm very proud of the organization. I would love to see it uh, continue uh, along at the high school. And I would love to be able to uh, give these kids an opportunity to go to the national conference. So we're out there banging down doors and trying to get support, trying to get funding, because it is a rather costly experience to get all these kids to Louisville, to spend three nights in a hotel, to travel down there, get all the equipment down there, et cetera. But I just wanted to say thank you, and I'm so proud of these kids. So give them all a round of applause, please. <laughs> Questions? Anybody else have any questions? Anybody? I have a quick question. Yes. So, Miss Lynn, um, I know you talked a lot about the kids, but didn't you yourself also receive recognition recently? Mm. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll let the board know about that. Too. Um, yes, I was the tw 2023 recipient of the ITEA, which is our our national 
Technology and Engineering Educators Association, I received the uh, 2023 Program of Excellence for New Hampshire. I have a quick question on, so we've, we recently had a presentation around the robotics team at the high school, which was did yep. really well. How would this integrate with we do we do robotics too. So right, we that's... we I just was focusing focusing on TSA tonight. We do have a competitive robotics team. TSA does actually have a robotics competition at their national conference. So if the kids go, they're bringing their robot too, and they're competing. We competed at the state level. We took two robots that qualified to our state competition. Uh, but in New Hampshire, um, New Hampshire TSA does not have a VEX event. VEX is separate. The robotics is separate, but. National TSA does have a VEX event at their national conference, and we have qualified to go to the VEX event based on our um, at getting into the state conference because you have to qualify to get into the state conference. So that earned us a spot at the national TSA conference as well. So we also do robotics. Hmm. We just I didn't focus on the robotics end of things tonight. I was focusing on the other events. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> Crushing robotics. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions for them while they're still here? In person? Thank you, Ms. Lynn, very much for your presentation. It's nice to hear about everything you guys have done. Nice Congratulations job, to job. all of you. Nice job. Great job, guys. <laughs> and great job public speaking to everybody, too. Yes. <laughs> I know we're scary up here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have all my. My national conference pins. <laughs> the, pins the pins are a big thing. Um, so next on the agenda, we have accept the New Hampton School Board members' resignation. So um, I know we in our packets we got the email. Um, Michael Delaney has stepped down um, as a member of the school board. So I need a motion to accept his resignation. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Moving on. So now we need to have the, have the job, the task of before us to appoint a New Hampton School Board rep. So the way this is going to work, I've had a few people reach out um, with interest in the position. So how we're going to do this is um, we're going to have each member, each individual who's interested come up, stand up, and just tell us why you want to be on the board, um, a little bit about yourself, just so we get to know you, and then we can ask questions. Um, and then at the end of all three, we'll vote on, on who will accept, who we want to appoint for the position. With that being said, just so that I'm open and honest, it is going to be a one-year, it's less than a year position. So it will be only filling the vacancy until March. It will go back on the ballot for a, posi a two-year position in March of 2024 to the district. So it will go out, back out onto that in 2024. So there'll be three school board votes come March of 2024, where normally there's like only two every year. So just want to make sure I put that out there um, as well. So um, let's see. So we'll start with Fran, since you're sitting up front. I'm going to have you stand up <laughs> since you're right up front. My name is Fran Wendelbo. Um, I think all of you know who I am and have experience with me uh, prior. I've served three years on the budget committee as chairman and three years on school board. Uh, recently ran for re-election, lost by four votes, won five of the seven towns, lost one town by three votes. Um, and um, one town evidently was encouraged not to vote for me. So when it all came out in the wash, I lost by four votes. There are two issues that are currently unfinished business that I would like to see through. One of them is the Bridgewater Hebron school issue on wanting to potentially withdraw from SAU 4. And the other is the assessment that this board has been doing of the current facilities that we have in the school district and what makes the most sense as far as um, realigning where schools are or who goes to what schools and making a decision as to 
uh, either replacing or renovating existing aging facilities. So I, I'd like to continue that process and um, hope you'll reappoint me. Questions from the board? I have one. Are you a proponent of closing Danbury? Because that is what my constituents are worried about. You know, I've given Danbury a lot of thought. And when I was on the budget committee, Danbury was down to getting below 50 students. And there was a lot of discussion then about closing it. Now it's grown and it's kind of bursting at the seams, so to speak, but appears to be landlocked. So it's kind of like between a rock and a hard place. There's no room for expansion. So something's got to be done there. Um, we're going to have kids from Alexandria that are going to be needing to be moved around. I don't know if Danbury makes any sense, but again, it would need to be enlarged. I've heard that there's some movement potentially within a butter's land that may be available. So I guess it depends on how everything comes together. I know they're very upset about the potential of one more grade coming to um, Bristol. Uh, to, to be honest with you, I've been looking at maybe it makes sense for all of our elementary schools to go to a one through eight model since it's the main issue supposedly driving the Bridgewater Hebron issue. Um, and perhaps it makes more sense to do a little bit to each campus to expand, to absorb one through eight. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I personally think that a school that is so small perhaps loses out a lot in exposure and opportunities. Uh, that's one of the main concerns I have with Bridgewater Hebron wanting to go through to one to eight because there's so many things that are offered to them. Like this program that we just heard about, that would be difficult to spread out and have those in each individual elementary school. Uh, sports, uh, drama, music, and so on would be tacked on, you know, once a week type thing, whereas now they get much more access at the middle school. So um, it's not a simple answer to should we close Danbury? Um, a lot of people want to see one much bigger school built and maybe more than one school closed, maybe two schools closed. So I, I think the facts are still out on that one, but if it can be expanded, um, yeah, I, I think it might make sense to keep Danbury, at least in the short term. Other questions for I have a question. So when you just, because you, you brought up the concept of like towns that you won and towns that you lost and implied that there was like potentially, you said evidently there was something going on in a certain town. Um, so when you, you wrote an article or a letter, I guess, to the newspaper where you described yourself that nobody, essentially I'll summarize, paraphrase, Nobody even knew the individual that was running against you, which is completely, I think, most people would agree with that statement. No one had any idea who this person was, couldn't have picked him out of a lineup, had no idea what he represented, didn't even know anything about him. Yet, that individual got four votes more than you across the board. So what, what are you, 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 you many times when you sat here tell us you have the most experience of any of us politically, what does that mean to you? If Someone that's running for office is running against somebody that nobody can they didn't campaign, no one knows who they are, literally, nobody knows who they are, what they represent, but people go out and vote for that person over the incumbent. What do you think that means? Well, you know, I, I, I think as time develops, we might learn more about that down the road that I'm about not what? at liberty to talk about, but I won five of the seven towns. I lost one by three votes, so and I lost that. one by a huge margin, and everybody that looks at that doesn't really pass the smell test. So what, Something so let's happened. Get, let's get focused on the fact that, like, what you're, doing, what you're doing is you're, what do you think about the fact that somebody, when people could leave it blank, right, what I would suggest to you is they vote, I do not want to have Fran on the school board. And that's why they voted for a person they had no idea who it was. They had no idea what he represented, 
Nobody even knew who he was the night that we all sat in this room. Nobody even knew who he was. And you even wrote that in the article to the newspaper. You wrote, he didn't announce his campaign, send a letter to the editor, introduce himself, or publicly ask for your vote. I had not met him. Like, I mean, like, you're right. So I guess I just ask you, you have a lot of political experience like you tell us. What does that mean about a mandate? It's the opposite of a mandate, friend. It means that four people more, <laughs> however it breaks out, half the towns, but you say you won towns, half the people in those towns, generally speaking, came to election day and said, I don't want to have Fran on the board. And what does that mean to you? I mean, or do you not interpret it like that? No. Why else would they vote for a person they have no idea who even is? They have no idea who And that's Lane a is. reflection on some voters that they didn't do their homework or that they were influenced by other people. No one knew how to influence. I'm telling you, when I saw that, that I live in Heber in the town that you're making some implication about that may or may not, I've never, I have no idea what you're talking about. I read the results and I was stunned because nobody campaigned against you. No, no, there was not a sign for the other person. I'm telling you that it doesn't take a real brilliant political mind to be able to see the results that came in and say, this is a mandate that they don't want Fran. And I think it's incumbent upon us as a school board to listen to and, and to what that means. It's not hard to read what it means. People did not want you on the school board. That's why they voted for a person. They have no idea who it is. And that's why we're here right now. And I don't really appreciate you insinuating without any data. That, does, that doesn't help the school board either. That kind of stuff doesn't help us when you sit on this board, like talking about things that might be or we might find out about, or maybe that's true. How about like any facts? There's nothing. So let me ask you one more question. So can you t ex tell us any school events, sporting events, drama, award ceremony? When was the last time you came to uh, any, any, any event at any school in Newfound? I went to the veterans um, presentation at New Hampton. I read at the Danbury Elementary School. Um, I took part in the chair auction through New Hampton. Um, you know, some of you, I think, probably all of you have children in the school and you're naturally attending their sporting events. And, you know, and that's good. I'm glad parents are involved like that. But you also have to understand that I have a husband who is very ill and I spend a lot of time caring for him. He's 24 seven bed bound. When I go to school board members, it costs, when I go to school board meetings, it costs me a couple of hundred dollars a month because I have to hire nursing staff to stay with my husband. But my commitment and dedication to the school board is so strong that I make time to be here. I don't have time to be going to other school events. Not that I don't keep up with what's happening in the district. Does anybody else have any questions for Fran? Thank you. Thank you, Fran. Um, next, Nathan Saylor. So tell us about yourself and why you want to be on the school board. Hello, my name is Nate Saylor. I am a parent of two students at New Hampton Community School. I have a second grader and a kindergartner. Uh, my wife works at Danbury Elementary. She's a Title I teacher for math. And I, for the last seven years, I am the department chair at the New Hampton School. I am a lifelong educator. I have lived all over the world educating in international schools. We have found this community to be enduring. We love it. And this is where we've decided to live. And I want my children to have the best possible education. And I see this as a time for me to get involved. I think there are some critical things going on in this community right now. And I, as you guys have all mentioned, what is about to be voted upon in the next year, I think is too big to not be taken seriously. And I think New Hampton needs to step up. And I decided I need to step up in this moment. I, for the last year, I have been on the TTC, the TTCC board. I am the chair of the facilities committee that is leading the charge for the new TTCC. We have gained incredible ground over the last year that has been incredibly successful. And that has kind of sparked me into doing this now. Um, 
this is not a position that I have longed for or have <laughs> desired for. Not at all. This is not something that I want for power or anything else. I see this as solely for me as my kids as a representative for my community, and that's the biggest thing for me. Um, I know none of you know who I am, but I am happy to answer any questions about my background. Um, I have a master's in secondary education. I've been a teacher since I graduated from university. Um, and that's the only profession I have had. So my wife is also, yeah, we are, we are educators through and through. Um, I know it's a different perspective on this board, but, uh, any questions you have, I'm happy to answer. I'll do my, your thoughts on Danbury <laughs> Elementary School question. Well, I'm a little different, you know, I guess, in this I... matter, right? My <laughs> wife does work there. <laughs> so I know, but it's going to oh. be my same question um, for everybody. My so wife, everybody my wife uh, left Laconia. She was there for four years. Um, she wanted a different role. She was originally in Bristol. She got transferred to Danbury and loves it. She loves the community. She loves what she does. She loves the small school feel. Um, she's worked in big schools, small schools. And so, you know, I, I hear her talk about the importance of it. I, so, I mean, I think the Dan, I went to the school board meeting with about the new schools and the Dan, Danbury came out at that meeting. Danbury came out um, and supported their school which was unbelievable. And I think that says a lot about a community and their willingness to go above and beyond. Okay. Questions about me. I think ask a question. As much as I'm not sure how much Tom Edwards, Hebron, I don't know how much you know, I'm sure you're in the community. So the, the Bridgewater Hebron situation and just any, any first opinions on, I mean, there's pluses yeah. and minuses of course, I know about it. Yeah. I'm not an expert in it. I would have to learn a lot more about it. I hear about it. I hear people talk about it. Do I have an expert opinion on that right now? I don't. Um, I don't know how you can stop someone from leaving if they want. I think that's the thing. If people want out, I think we have to look at it. But I think there's, I mean, obviously there's huge financial um, implications going on here. But I'm not an expert on this at all at this point. Uh, it's something I would have to learn about quickly. Yep. I was going to ask about 349. Tom stole my question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I stole everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> stole everybody. Yeah. Joe Mulvey from, from, <laughs> <laughs> from Bristol. Um, Sorry. Are you looking to fill in, or do you think you would, uh, in, in March when it comes on the ballot, do you think you'd. Uh, that's a great question. What I kind of love about this is that it's a one year, less than a one year, as Melissa mm -hmm. reminded, and that's a great way for me to see, hey, can I do this? Is this something that I want to do going forward? And I think that allows me the perfect amount of time to do that. And again, you know, this was not something that I've planned for years and said, this is what I'm going to do. So I think this sets the per perfect opportunity for me to see whether or not I would want to continue to do this in my all that's my in, in honesty all right because it was asked to fran i'm going to ask because i like to know the answers from everybody um what was your last event you attended for a school function oh boy uh i'm i mean i'm there daily i was there today dropping my kids off um i brought my I new kind of drop off um, <laughs> two weeks ago <laughs> was it April 14th, I brought my New Hampton students with me to do community service. And we spent the day at the community school. Uh, we raked, we swept, we did everything that they, just to help them get going. Um, that was my choice to try and get involved there. Um, oh, we also, my kids did the, um, the, the plane where the egg drop, I'm sorry, the egg drop competition. Yes, I, saw I that. don't, was that a couple, that was a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know, a lot, I guess that's the answer. Okay. All right. We do okay. live also like, you know, a quarter mile from the school, so <laughs> it's not terribly far. So makes it a little easier. Okay. Okay. All right, anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bridget? Yes. Hi. So I know some of you. I don't know. Um, I can give a little bit of background. Um, I owned a childcare for nine years. Um, 
we moved to New Hampton seven years ago now. Um, I have three kiddos in the school district. I have one in New Hampton Elementary, two in the middle school, soon to be one in each school. So that'll be interesting <laughs> next year. Um, I currently work for a domestic violence agency in Laconia, New Beginnings. Um, I have coached volleyball at, middle, at the middle school for the past three years. Um, and that's kind of it about me as far as um, my first interaction with Newfound was actually I was worked for United Way Whole Village. Um, I did some parenting classes in the middle school. Didn't get very much of a crowd when I did those. Um, and I think that was kind of my first eye opening to wanting to be more involved in the community. Um, and then when I had my own um, adopted my own three kiddos um, at different ages, I started to become involved in each of the different schools and just to see and then as a coach seeing um, the various stages of parent and family involvement in schools um, and I think that's where I stand is wanting to encourage more of that. Any questions? Anything more about me? All right, the Danbury question. <laughs> so I, I think I'm probably a little jaded because we're a small school in New Hampton as well and I have loved that for my so my two older children um, we adopted when they were seven and nine so a lot of transitions in their lives so when we moved to new hampton it was a great transition to be able to have a small community that um became a family to them um, and supported them during a rough a rough time of their lives and then i stopped i closed my own center and so my youngest this was his first year in kindergarten so it was a good transition for mom too <laughs> to a small school <laughs> Just, I, I didn't know this when I joined, but you, are you aware, and I think this is true, but you wouldn't be able to coach Interesting. if you're on the school I did board. not, but I'm in so, a transition year right now because my kid goes to the high school next year. So, just all right. That's a good thing to know. Yeah. Think Thank you. It's going to solve those conflict little, of interest. Yeah. So. You'd be an employee. Gotcha. Gotcha. You can volunteer and help. Right. right. You can volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Just say. <laughs> well, we'll just, just go with the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of in the that. same position that I haven't done enough research to be able to say that I have a valid stance on either way in that. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Honesty is best policy. The last school event that was attended. Oh, I just went to the middle school, um, and I just did teacher appreciation today, this morning. <laughs> I'm a classroom mom, too. <laughs> How has your experience been at the middle school? Sometimes we hear, I mean, I'm, I'm a middle school mom, too. So I, I know my experience with my son in seventh grade, and I have nothing but good things to say. Yeah, so. so what they do. But I'm curious what your experience has been, especially with your kid. It sounds like they've gone through a lot of transitions. Mm -hmm. if you, what your experience has been, and if you're... You haven't really done anything with the high school yet, but you will. Not yet. Yeah, next year. Yep. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, my initial transition was my eldest, oldest, who's eight in eighth grade now. Um, I think Chris coming on board has been amazing. Um, I We struggle a lot with both of my kiddos just with some of their past stuff and mm -hmm. the support and the academic support. Um, I'm like, I always tell them that I'm the crazy mom that calls like, hey, I need some support for my kids and advocate, <laughs> and, but that's going to be me anyway. So, um, but they've been great at communication. Trish is amazing too at that. And I think I've, I, the last couple of years, especially I've had nothing but great things to say um, about that. Oh, my question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a theme, I think, right here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that was it. That's what we had three, three individuals that were interested in the position um, that reached out to me. So it's Fran, Nathan, and Bridget. Um, so what we'll do is we'll um, vote. I'm going to do it by a show of hands just because I'm not going to be able to hear eyes, uh, count eyes for each individual, just to be honest, that way. It's easier um, to vote. So those who vote to appoint Fran, please raise your hand. Seeing none. Those who, and to vote for Nathan, please raise your hand.
and those vote for Bridget, please raise your hand. Three. No, it can't be. I can't vote because no. we have to have an odd number. When it's a close vote, I cannot vote. So it is a three to two vote. That's why there's always an odd number on the so on the board. Three, for Nathan. three there was three for Nathan. Yeah. So Nathan. There was two for Bridget. So it's Nathan has been voted. Okay. And you can't vote. You have to abstain. I can't vote because otherwise I potentially could have tied the vote and then it would have I don't know what would have happened to break the tie because that's why there's always an odd number on the board for a vote, for a tie vote, the chair always is the tiebreaker. Right. So I will be the tiebreaker by abstaining. So it's Nathan. Yes. So Nathan, I'll get in touch with you. Um, we're going to bring you into the office and we have some paperwork to do and get you. Ruth is actually going to um, swear him in now. He's okay. going to take his oath. Oh, you and want him to sit? You, and right? he's going to sit right over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're putting him right to work. We're, we're <laughs> going right to work here. We're going to okay. pass. No, that's for wearing. You're on. I did kind of, I did, when I did reach out to them, I did explain it. <laughs> so we'll take a five minute, like, recess just okay. so she can swear him in and. <laughs> <laughs> Get a drink. Aye. Get a drink. Sailor. S-A-L-E-R. Allison Sailor. S-A-L-E-R. Allison Sailor. Can you hear me? Mika, you're going to yeah, that's prom. next. Oh, yeah. I didn't get up. Getting excited. You have to, Do you I have your dress? You oh, I have you. I'd be happy to. Nice. Oh, what'd you get? Do you have a picture? No, I, I can't. <laughs> I could see like you like. No, I know what I think. She has another one. Oh, she has a picture. I'm like. I just got a sanitizer from the boyfriend actually sending me the picture. Oh, wow. It's very nice. Four, three. Do you have that shipping in my hand? Thank you very much. Did you hear me? Oh, that's so pretty. Yes, the car windshield has been like. Very nice. Where are you guys actually? Welcome on this side. That's great. Very cool. Have you been there before? It's beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. Very cool. Okay. <laughs> you gave him an agenda. Okay. We'll point you in the right direction. We'll point you in the right direction if we need something. We'll kind of, <laughs> as we go along, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be understanding. All right, approval or modification of agenda. We have quite a few modifications. So we need to add a teacher request. So that would be for new business leave of 11. Yep. yep, for leave of absence. We need to add a new kindergarten teacher at Bridgewater Hebron Village School. That's number 12 under new business. Yep, and then we have a facilities request. And that's going under B, under financial. We're going to do that under financial. Yep. Is that facilities request the locker place? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. And I also have um, a procurement cards. And I can be under business. That's fine. Under business C. Procurement cards? Yeah. What's it? What is it, Robin? Procurement cards. Procure. Is that the thing we have to talk about? And it has to just be on. Is that the one that has to be on the agenda? No, it's no. already on there. The That's general something different. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to keep everything you told me that we had to add and make sure yep. I yep. Uh, we had it all. So I didn't. That's okay. it. And did we take um, a policy out? Was there something we, we were, were modifying? We are going to take out um, 6B. Okay. And our That's HS student handbook changes. So you can cross out 6B. It's going to need more changes for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So a policy will be worked with. Okay. All right. So approval of minutes April 10th and April 17th. I need a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Any gross errors, issues concerning this discussion regarding the minutes? 
Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstention. Thank you. You can abstain. I, I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't here for the meetings. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'll okay. cue you when I need you. <laughs> All right. So public comment. We are open for public comment. Aubrey Friedman, Bridgewater. Uh, just one topic tonight. That's a replacement of superintendent. I'm going to urge that the superintendent is not being replaced. And first, I want to add, this is definitely not directed at you, Pierre, because everybody knows you worked really hard, and I've sat here in school board meetings and listened to your uh, report, so it's definitely not personal. It's, I, I want to talk about the position itself, just so it's clear. It's position, not, not person. So I think the re, uh, superintendent should not be replaced because, number one, We've got so many things, this is a perfect time to make a change. Uh, we've got the uh, hill might be coming on, the three towns might be dropping. We've got the three elementary schools are falling apart. Proficiency is still you know, pretty iffy. Uh, taxpayer dissatisfaction with the, uh, the amount of the property tax bills and um, continually going up and of course declining enrollment so it's a good time to make a change just because we've always done something the same way there's no reason it, it has to continue to go on the same way then you might say well we have to have a superintendent actually not RSA 194 C5 and I'll read it um, school districts oh each school administrative unit shall provide superintendent services to be performed as required by RSA 194C4. School districts shall not be required to have a superintendent and may assign these services to one or more administrative personnel working full or part-time or such services may independently contract it. So we don't have to have a superintendent. It can be done differently and that's what I'm urging is let's think about this. Um, then, uh, but people will say, but we need somebody in charge. That's the usual. Actually, we have six schools. We have six principals. Somebody is actually in charge of each school. So somebody is in charge. And then you might say, well, what about the SAU administrative unit? We have 12 other people in there. And I say the work could be spread out. And um, I'm sorry to say, I say more of it should go to the business administration as administrator. Sorry, Robin, <laughs> but it's kind of logical because you work closely with the superintendent. So, and I wouldn't be opposed to that person getting paid more, to be honest, because if you take on more responsibilities, it can be spread out. Um, and as even you know about the three towns, there talk about. Um, there's been talk about if it happens to outsource a superintendent, not to get one of their own. So it can be done. Um, I've worked for private, you know, out in the private sector all of my adult life until I retired. And occasionally they'd have these uh, shakeups and they'd get rid of somebody at the top and people thought, well, well what's going to happen? Actually, the sun still sets, uh, still rises in the east, sets in the west when somebody from the top is leaves and the organization still went on and people still went about their work. So it's not the end of the world if we didn't have a superintendent and just because we've always done it that way it doesn't have to be. Um, and then furthermore, just one further point, if you do hire a superintendent, which I hope you don't, one recommendation that I would make is put a, a bonus in it, like a real incentive bonus for to maybe cut costs and improve proficiency rates. And if a person uh, who fills that position could actually do it, I say give him a big bonus, him or her. You know, I, even I, me, and you know how I am with costs, I would be for that because, you know, that's how the real world does it. They give big bonuses if you really can accomplish something of substance, but it has to be measurable and it has to be real. It can't be just, you know, rah rah type of thing. So that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Seeing none. We'll move on to correspondence. 
any correspondence? Yeah. I do not have any, no, I do not have any correspondence for tonight. Okay. Oh, sorry. Next, I just, normally we just roll right into it. Sorry, superintendent. Yep. So, sorry. as the board knows, we've been busy uh, filling positions, uh, teaching staff, and I'll be nominating uh, quite a few tonight, so it's that time of the year. Uh, we also will be going forward with to support the administrative team um, in May. We do the strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threat survey of the staff. Uh, we find that the administrative team finds that very helpful in developing goals for going forward over the summer. So we will uh, continue with that um, later on this month. Um, lastly, the administrative team has asked that we change what we do on the last day of school. So traditionally, there's been a barbecue for the teachers. It started off with a number of years ago before I arrived here where the school board would come and cook. Um, and really, honestly, that really hasn't happened. It's been me and Jason Torsey, and I fully appreciate that everybody's busy working and you have jobs. So what they have asked, what the principals have asked and is if the teachers could remain in their buildings and we could provide them a lunch there. Uh, the, the teachers would prefer to have more time in their buildings and their classrooms on the last day to wrap things up. Mm -hmm. And then we would all meet here at the auditorium at 2 p.m. because then we always follow up with a recognition ceremony for our retirees. Mm -hmm. So unless anybody objects to that, that's our plan, unless somebody wants to come cook. Um, <laughs> it's also very uh, quite a challenge because um, all of our schools release at different times. So it's hard to get everybody to arrive at the same time. And uh, Bridgewater Hebron has the latest um, um, release time. So we wait and we wait. And it just, it's really difficult. And I like to be equitable to everybody to make sure they can do that. So if nobody objects to that, that's going to be the plan for this year. And if pe reps want to come, they can, one, you can go to the school for the pizza party for that, your individual school. Yep, that's school. correct. You could it's go a little to bit tricky because then we have any school because then right. we got the middle school, the high school, any school. And mm -hmm. if you want to come to the awards, because it's really nice to, it's recognize really nice to that recognize retirees. the teachers yeah. and the retirees. We also do a awards. number of years, like a five year, a 10 year, 15 year. It's nice. Come back to see some of your little teachers. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a nice show. Kind yeah. of recognize some outstanding, oh, some really outstanding yeah. teachers that are retiring. So that way, I mean, yeah, we could, if able, to go yeah. to certain yeah. lunch events or whatever, but really prioritize trying to go to the award ceremony. Yeah. That'll be everybody, everybody together. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. If you could prioritize that, everybody. Yeah, I see. Yep. Got it. Makes sense. And that's at 2 o'clock in London. Yep, 2 o'clock here in the high school auditorium. Okay. okay. And that's all I have for my report. That was short and sweet. Yep. Student rep report. Hi. Okay. Um, so, one of the biggest events we had here uh, was we finished our One Book, One School to Catch a Killer. And so the author, Cheryl Scarborough, traveled all the way from Washington State and first gave Miss Maloney's creative writing class and a few other students who had wanted to attend a writing workshop and explained her process for writing, what being an author looks like, the publishing process, all of that. And one really interesting thing that she had told us was that she had written over 300 episodes for numerous different TV shows that my peers and I have all like grown up watching through middle school. <laughs> And then a whole school assembly was called and she talked a lot more about the book itself. One thing she explained was the difference between like forensics and eyewitness testimony and why it makes such a huge difference. Uh, she, had the, she had six students called down from the audience. Uh, three were suspects and three were detectives. <laughs> and they had to role play the process of what happens when suspects get investigated and tested for DNA similarities and they had to interview each other and the whole audience was like cheering on for who they thought was a murderer or not and then she used these like hemoglobin samples and like musical squabs and stuff and so they actually had to use all of these different materials to figure out who the actual murderer was and that was fun. Um, <laughs> Last week, a small group of students and faculty were bused to the Common Man in Plymouth 
and attended a suicide prevention training through NAMI, uh, where they talked about uh, different signs of like mental health or illness struggles and how to be able to identify them and then how to be able to report them to guidance to get them the help that they really need. Uh, two other new Bond students also were invited back to teach the training with the representative from NAMI and um, kind of show all of these students who are attending for the first time what exactly they were going to be doing and going back to their own schools to teach. Uh, there have been a handful of other field trips recently, mostly for career exploration. Students have gone to forestry themed, hotel management, culinary arts, and other professions. Um, course requests have finished, and there, I was told there are 100, over 120 requests for quick and easy meals. <laughs> over 152. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so three of Ms. Old's stu uh, student teams are going to go compete at this competition at New England University. Correct me if I'm wrong. New England College. We won. We won. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. And that was really cool. <laughs> Um, Senor Gatehouse and Kelsey Cody took a group of students to Ecuador where they explored the Amazon, did like uh, zip lining through it, and I saw a lot of pictures. <laughs> gorgeous. And then Mr. Harris and Miss Kay also took a group to England and Italy to explore all the like old ec uh, architecture and different things. Um, on Saturday, baseball was struggling with a record of 2-6, and they were behind in their game. But for some reason, they told me that they just kept their energy up, and even though normally that wouldn't have been the way it gone, they, they carried through and won that game, and that they were super excited about that. Um, softball right now has a record of 4-5, and they said that they're they're feeling pretty good. You know, they lost a couple seniors last year, but I feel like they're really getting into it. Some of their freshmen are looking really good this year. Um, there are gonna be two home games on Friday with Prospect, and that'll be at four from our support. And then you can stay afterwards for our production of Cinderella at seven <laughs> if you want to come to some school events. Um, there's going to be a band concert May 23rd at 6.30. And then on Friday, the track team was invited to Monadnock, just a pretty far drive for a twilight meet. And so all of the events, except for jab and disc, for obvious reasons, <laughs> started at 7.30, dark. And um, the girls blew everyone out of the water, including Keene, which is a D1 school. And Taylor Mooney broke our school record for pole vault at nine feet and one inch. Oh, wow. Insane. And then the boys came in fourth, but also they were really close. And the boys team is just looking really good compared to the past couple of seasons. And they seem to have a lot more motivation watching the girls team. <laughs> and so coaches are thinking that the girls have a really good chance of coming in first again at States and boys definitely for top five. Excellent. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Lots going on at the high school. Yes. <laughs> Which is awesome. Um, teacher rep. So my report this week, this week is for BES. Life in Miss Higgins' fifth grade class has been all SAS related lately, including a math madness review that students have loved with basketball themed brackets to keep track of their skill review. Next week, they will begin accumulating activity for math. Students will be researching, creating, and building a volume zoo. Using teamwork, collaboration, partners will research, plan, build, and design their animals. Students will be assessed on their calculations, collaboration, neatness, and time management. The zoo will be available after the competition for other students in the school to, to view. Parents, teachers, and students have all teamed up to make inspirational bracelets for the kids to wear during testing. Each bracelet has a positive reminder and a message to encourage students as they test. By the end of May, all students will have a collection of bracelets to represent their hard work, determination, and effort. Third grade has been finishing up a unit in reading on the solar system. 
they have completed practicing cursive lowercase letters and are beginning the uppercase letters this week. In math, third grade has completed the unit on data and is now working on geometry and measurement. May is a big month for testing, so they are especially looking forward to going to the Flume and Cannon Mountain at the end of the month for a field trip. Second graders in Ms. Roby's class have been studying landforms and making wonderful 3D projects to present to the class. And finally, first graders in Ms. Kessler's class compete, completed a unit on the history of our country in the 1700s. We are busy learning about geometry and math. First graders are writing personal narratives as well. Thank you, Thank you very much. Next committee reports, budget committee. Uh, we had a meeting last Thursday, May 4th, it was an organizational meeting. Uh, we swore in the new, me new members uh, from Bristol. It was Rick Alpers, he was a write-in. Um, and New Hampton, I say new in quotation marks because it's John Jettis, also is right, and he has served on that committee for I think nine years at this point, quite a long time, and he accepted the right in because he didn't officially run, but um, Virginia Parker will be the chair again, Jen Larchelle will be the vice chair, and we have our next meeting scheduled for August 17th. So Rick Alpers won. For, uh, I don't know if it was by writing or if it was... He was a write-in. He, he, he was a write-in. He, write right. he, yeah, right. right. he was a write-in candidate, and he had. And he'll be the budget committee member for Bristol. For Bristol. Bristol. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next, facilities committee. Yeah, we had a meeting uh, last Wednesday, uh, May third. Um, wasn't a ton going on. They are um, meeting with a couple of different uh, security companies, getting um, some quotes. Um, for things like, like fire, uh, upgrading fire alarm and detection, things like that. Um, they, there wasn't much of an update for Danbury. Um, they're still waiting on numbers. Um, they did mention that, you know, um, they had some donors that were maybe gonna fund it, but they were hoping maybe to go with more of a permanent uh, solution versus um, a modular temporary solution, but we're, we're still waiting to find out about all that. Um, they we did discuss uh, the lead in the water um, stuff and you know the plan for right now is um, you know signage for water you know safe drinking water and things like that um, and getting you know filters for fountains just to um, you know until they can find out exactly why um, the numbers are high but that's uh, that's that okay thank you very much. Sure. Um, policy committee, well, you have lots of stuff to <laughs> approve today, so we were busy at work at policy committee, so we're bringing a bunch of policies to everybody. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Wellness committee? Um, our last meeting we worked on looking at our current policy and rewriting that to kind of meet some new additions, new standards, and tailor it more to what the wellness committee is looking to do but with that as a question is after we kind of come up with the policy that we feel fits the purpose of the committee does that then have to go to policy committee yes okay yep, yep. Um, so yeah that's our meetings are an, an hour so they're fast and furious so sometimes we only get to one <laughs> one topic at a time Hey, that works. Every committee is a little different. Yeah. Building committee. Have not met. Well, yeah, we have not met, and I don't know well, that we have one. We, we had the well, right now. We're pressing budget. pause because yeah. the board voted on a few things. One was the site assessment um, across the road. Money. One for the Bristol Elementary structural assessment, and the other one was for the additional work for the architect. Right. So That's we have right. to let those things happen now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we're working on it behind the scenes, Jason Torres and I. So you haven't missed anything. Oh, it's been a busy month for the really meetings, has. my goodness. Curriculum committee. Um, at our last meeting, we went over the policy revisions to get to the uh, policy committee when we're done with that. And we'll be doing that this, or May 15th at our next meeting. And as you can see, there was a uh, curriculum committee request on the agenda, so we hitting that for more parents to be on the committee. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hill School District. 
So we have a meeting tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. Um, what we did at our last meeting is we kind of went through the existing tuition agreement. Mm -hmm. um, I, myself and Brian Connolly from Hill, we kind of went through and just struck out, like, I don't even think we do this, and this doesn't apply anymore, because it's like it, a lot of it was germane to when we implemented the tuition agreement, like the class of 2014, 2015, we're allowed to choose between Franklin and then found it. So those kinds of strikes. Um, it's my understanding that he was going to bring that to their business administrator to look at it, and I'm sure we'll discuss it tomorrow. Um, he did request at our last meeting that perhaps we could have a joint session, a presentation, or just get together chit chat with the uh, Hill School Board at our second meeting in May, which will be um, two weeks from now. Um, I don't do math well in my head, but, <laughs> um, but that was the request. So if we could put that on the agenda, agenda. perhaps yep. Yep. for our next meeting, that would be greatly appreciated. So that by then we will have perhaps a draft tuition agreement. We can all discuss it and determine our next steps from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next, new business. Um, we have a resignation from the superintendent effective June 30th. So we need to vote. I need, I need a vote to, I need a motion to accept the resignation and to vote. Huh. No motion. What if nobody makes a motion? Yeah, what if we want to? We still have. Hey, you're stuck. <laughs> Sorry. No. No. Funny. I tried. <laughs> Can't harm me for trying. I'll move to accept the superintendent's resignation under duress. I'll second. Any discussion? Thank you for all you do for you. And that's not really discussion, just a comment. Thank you. Oh, it's been a rough three years. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's been a rough three years um, since he started. I mean, I was on the committee for um, for Pierre coming here. So it's been a it's been a bumpy road the past few years, and I, you've done a great job leading this district through this, and I appreciate all that you've done um, for this district. It's like I said, it's been a rough couple of years with all these things changing so fast and furious, um, and being on top of things, getting the middle school middle school project done. If we hadn't have been on top of things, there's no way that would have happened, and we wouldn't have gotten as much money from the state Absolutely. to get that done and not have a huge financial tax burden to our constituents so thank you for all the hard work you've done Thanks. and Robin too I mean I know Robin was involved in that but if we hadn't been on our game we that never would have happened so thank you and I appreciate all that you've done big so. shoes to fill yes big shoes to fill yeah, I would, yeah just uh, appreciate everything you've done I was really looking forward to continuing to work with you so I was I was, um, I was I don't know the right word you know disappointed that we won't be able to work with you so but I guess at this point you're moving on so best of luck and really appreciate it's been a really difficult time and it's the kind of time that we in my opinion like you need we needed leadership you know it's such an important position the superintendent position in this school you know especially in this type of a school district with all the different you know seven different towns coming and all the different configurations of schools and so forth it's just such an immense responsibility and I think you've done a really good job of staying on top of things. You're always very informed and aware of exactly what's going on. Um, and I feel comforted in that, in that I feel like you really are leading the ship and have done a really good job for that. So I think that's something that I'm really going to miss. And, you know, we want to work hard to try to get somebody to fill, like people were just saying a second ago, the big shoes that you're going to leave in that regard. But I think you've got us going and, you know, there's certainly a lot of things that we got to work on. Um, and it almost seems unprecedented, the amount of stuff, but I think you've got us going in a good direction, so I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next, creating an interim superintendent committee. So, sorry, I have to look at my email on this one. I don't mess it up. Um, I recommended a committee because it's going to be um, it's going to be like your hour-long wellness committees. Um, Pierre's last day is June 30th, so it's going to be a fast and furious committee um, <clears throat> to get things um, to get things moving and uh, making some quick decisions and interviews and things like that. Um, sorry, 
I get a lot of emails in a day. Sorry. Uh, okay, so Pierre um, recommended for a teacher, Colleen Abbey, um, for a para, Tara Muzzy. She's from Bristol. She's also a parent. The 18, Nancy Coffin. The SAU office, Robin Reinhold and Mel Schokel. Um, and then I would like to appoint um, Tom Edwards, um, and I will sit on that committee as well because I have heard from people schedules are <coughs> are quite tight. Um, so I'll volunteer to be on that committee as well. Um, so I need. Can you say those names again? Yep. Yes. Let me find it again. <laughs> Colleen Abbey. No, it's yeah, it's Colleen Abbey. Tara Muzzy. Tara Muzzy. I couldn't remember her first name. Nancy Coffin, Robin Reinhold, and Mel Schopel. Okay. <laughs> and then Tom and myself. Okay. I make a motion to create the <coughs> superintendent committee. I'll second. As stated. Sorry. Yeah. Any further discussion? Have we posted this position? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was posted a few weeks ago. Yep. yep. Um, all those in all those in favor <laughs> say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next, staff nominations staff nominations and resignations. Okay, we'll start off with uh, teaching staff. So recommending to the board to hire Rachel Spain. For high school special ed, Claire McGyver, elementary music, Penny McKenna, Bristol Elementary teacher, and Robin LaBelle, uh, Bristol Elementary teacher. I move to accept the professional staff hires. I'll second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, contract renewal for recommending renewing uh, Justine Kimball and Justin Tinker. I'll make a motion to approve the contract renewal for Justine Kimball and Justin Tinker. Second. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, next. With four resignations, I wish the board to accept Olivia Marple is Middle School World Language, Stephanie Arends, High School Music, Rebecca McPherson, Bridgewater Hebron, Grade 5, and Emily Gatehouse here at the High School World Language. Make a motion to accept the resignations. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? And right. that request is later. <laughs> right. And write those two. Yep. And then I have the, as discussed in non public, the slate of um, the administrative staff, as you saw, and to include increasing the administrators to have three personal days, which would put them, all of the groups in Newfound would be at three personal days, and also all of the um, program specialists that were all on that document. I move to accept the document and recommendations as outlined by Pierre. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next, policies for review update. This is policy IHAM, IHAM-F. KLB, IGD, IDG, IGDJ, and the confidentiality agreement. We didn't make changes nope, to that's that. Just it's just so we changed the dates on the bottom, right? No. This is the the, the um, IHAMF, there were changes, but as a sex ed teacher, I support the changes that you made. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, they were made some at the policy that's yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we did make some changes to it. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the policies for review and update as stated. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Policies to rescind IFE and GCI. 
Need a motion to accept. Make a motion to rescind. I'll second. second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Next, district handbooks. B reminder B is removed, so NRHS faculty handbook, NMMS faculty, NHCS faculty, DES staff handbook, BES staff handbook, elementary school student handbook, support staff handbook, program specialist handbook, athletic handbook changes. I move to accept the changes. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? This does get the. This is the change with the pairs all on the same page with yep. three personal days. So everybody right. in the district has the same. Yep. And program specialists. Okay. Yep. Yes. Just want to make that. Mm -hmm. Pull that up. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Okay. Next, new teacher evaluation plan. Yeah, I just speak to that just briefly. Uh, that went through the the. Um, policy committee. So that was a collaborative effort for about two years, uh, working with teachers and our some of our administrative team. And this year, we really pushed hard. We had a group of nine teachers that were involved in that. And so the, it was really back and forth, work committee work, send it back out to the entire group of teachers and brought it back in and revised it, came down to a rubric model, uh, which is much more user friendly than what's referred to as the Marzano model. Um, and really, you know, we kept, I kept stressing to them, let's make this like really reflective of what good teaching is. So as we had these sample rubrics, we whittled them down and kept getting to the point. So I think everybody's very pleased and excited to move forward and um, move into a new model. So I, I wanna thank all the teachers and administrators for their hard work that they did on this. <coughs> I'll make a motion to accept the new teacher evaluation plan. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. What do you think? Yeah, that's probably proper. Yes, because it's a new teacher. Yeah, that one's kind of, it's a teacher evaluation, but it's a teacher evaluation oh, form. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's a few. it's a plan. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not a monetary yeah. gain. It's or, not a financial gain. It's yeah, not a, yeah. I, I think because it's not a financial. Okay. I think because the, the conflict of interest clearly states it's a financial, financial gain. Gain. Yeah. After reading it multiple times. Right. There's no financial uh, gain. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I remember la we have read that like three or four times. It does say it has to be a monetary um, change. But thank you for being on, on top of it. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, next, Abbey Group contract renewal. Yep, the uh, Abbey Group is up for renewal option for the first of the five years. Um, they submitted their budget. They have actually they went down surprisingly. Um, 2023 was their first year. We, we hired them. Heard you probably all heard of wonderful things about them. I'm sure. Um, they were at. Um, I'm doing if I actually do the math. 70, about oh, 75,000, we are gonna to have to do a subsidy. And for 2023, 24, they are uh, projecting a loss of $64,019.24, which is a decrease of almost $10,000, which I was um, happy to see. Um, and we just, this is the first year renewal, and we just need approval that you are interested in continuing with Abbey Group as our food service management company. I would make a motion to approve continuation. Second. Any further discussion? What did we budget as the general operating budget transfer for next school year? We, we budgeted for 80 and it's going to be 64. Yeah, yeah it's been, I mean, I just think it's wor worthwhile. Like you said, there's been a lot of really good feedback around it. And so that was a, a really good process and just decision and then implementation you know from I think taking something that wasn't as you know wasn't as you know wasn't really hitting the mark for what we wanted and it sounds like financially it's, it's we're even doing a little better than we thought so it's a kind of a home run there yep I agree um, any further discussion seeing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 
Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, job description, school psychologist. So that was from policy. So that was just an update. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the school psychologist job description. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Abstentions? Moving on. Curriculum committee request. Does anybody have it? Oh. Just a minute. I got to pull it up in my email. Because they requested to add two. Another parent. Two, two parents. parents. One at the middle school level and one at the high school level. What's the request? Are there hmm. a lot of parents in attendance at the meetings? No. Which was, I think, when, when is it going to be discussion? Is it discussion now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think I, that's a critical point, right? So it's open for public. We've had nobody come except one person come one time who actually isn't a parent. And so, and it's already, the size of the committee is already at what yeah, point? Yeah, that was, that was my next it's question. A, yeah, How big is it already? It's a yeah. large committee, and we have multiple, board, you know, people that just happen to either be on this board or as employees that do have children as well. Um, so it's an interesting one because we do have a lot of parent representation on the board, mm -hmm. like significant parent representation right. on the board. You have five. <laughs> five of your parents. Five of yeah. parents yeah. already. Including the two parents. Right. Sure. They already have two. High schoolers and middle schoolers? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it was my first meeting and kind of like, you know, trying to get a feel for where that was headed. Okay. But then as I sat on other committee meetings, it's the same makeup. You know, actually, there are no, like, the wellness, it's kind of that double, like, parent staff, parent board member. Um, but when I was on the facilities committee, there is no parents on that committee. Um, so I think we have a good mixture of parents on committees. Like the, I think the building committee has parents on it. And yes, that's true. Community members. Yeah, community yes. members. So, and again, you know, the rest of the committee had explained that there has not been a substantial amount of community parent involvement thus far. So. Was the committee approached by other parents looking to join, or, or was this just... Not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. So it was just something. Okay. And nobody came to express that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, oh, I was just going to ask something until I just blinked it. Sorry. Um, and all of our committees are open to the public. public. They're posted in advance. The agendas sure. are right. posted. Because we have a gentleman that shows up to every facilities meeting. Yep. Um, and he is a strong contributing member. He just mm -hmm. cannot vote when it comes to, but he is an active participant. Yep. Just on that one last point, we did have John Sellers, an elected official, came. He was the only, I think, the only person that's come to any of our meetings. Yes. And he, his comment, his only comment was that it was running really well, and that he was very impressed with the work that we were doing. Okay. So that's the only feedback we've even gotten yeah. from anybody external to the to the committee. Okay. All right. So we'll vote on the request. Yes would be adding two more parents. Nay will be, or opposed would be not adding the additional people to the committee because um, we do have to vote on it. Um, so I need a motion to accept the request to the board. I'll make a motion to accept the request. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. So um, any more discussion? I mean, we kind of, discussed it a bit already any further discussion before vote i just wanted to make sure it's clear because yeah. it you know it's a tricky one for um for i'll a just vote be clear i'm making a motion to accept to right. so that we can vote on it right okay yes yeah. and that's all uh, that's yeah. more or less what it is it's a, be clear because they they did ask us to right. bring it to us and unless there's a motion in a second we can't vote on it right. so all those rules um all those in favor of adding two more parents to the curriculum committee say aye all those opposed say nay. 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 Abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Next teacher request. So we have a request by Lindsay Benton. She's a science teacher at the middle school. And she's requesting for a leave of absence for next year. So it would be unpaid leave of absence, but she is requesting that she have that and then she can return to her position um, at the end of the year. 
I'll make, some, make a motion to accept the leave of absence request. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next, uh, superintendent staff request. So I'm asking the board to approve an additional position for kindergarten at Bridgewater Hebron Village School uh, for next year. We have um, kind of had an explosion of enrollment there. We're up to 27 students. So right now we have one teacher and 27 kindergartners. That wouldn't work. Um, I have looked at all options, one of which was, so as you know, Alexandria students are split between Bristol and uh, Bridgewater. So I looked at bringing them over, uh, the, the kindergarten students from Alexandria to Bristol, but that would make their class sizes too big. So in Bristol is our only school that has two sections of each, each grade. Um, they currently have 15 students. So that would put them at about 20. So 15 is about maximum for kindergarten. Um, so we just have too many students. That's basically <laughs> what it boils down to. Now, fortunately, we budgeted, if you remember, some of you on the board in the fall, that we weren't sure what was going to happen with Danbury fifth grade. Um, so we budgeted a position. We've not had to fill it yet. So the money is there in the budget. So it makes sense to allocate it for that. And I'd like to do it now so then we can advertise and get, get going on a kindergarten teacher. And this is just the initial enrollment. This isn't including summer mm -hmm. enrollment, yes. the, right. the people, the first day of school walk-ins. Mm -hmm. um, That's exactly like that. right. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, this is right now the data we have. Oh, they were on the cutoff, but they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. OK. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next, Old Business House Bill 349. Oh, you missed the wait. facilities. I thought I put the facilities under financial. Oh. I put oh, it under B, it. financial. Oh, you did? Okay. The lock replacement and the oh, there. I put the lock and procurement under okay. financial because Robin brought the lock stuff. Okay, that's fine. Yep. I have a habit of sticking Robin's stuff under financial. Sure. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Uh, so I sent out to the board the update on House Bill 349. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it was. It came out of committee. The Senate committee amended. Uh, so that amendment. Um, so we, at the request of the board, I submitted the amendment, as did Ned Gordon. His and I were similar. So the part about trying to speed up the process, the whole four-year uh, process, has been shortened now to essentially one year. So March of 2024. If I mean, if it moves through and becomes a law. March of 2024, at town meeting, those three towns will have to vote. If one of them does not vote in favor, then it's, it dies. So it's one, Ned was very clear about that. He said, they should have one bite at the apple here and move on because it's not fair to the rest of Newfound. Um, now the other portion, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, in fact, uh, Kim had asked about bringing in some of those, some of the language from RSA 195, which is the, uh, the cooperative school language for withdrawal studies. And that would have included, and I mentioned it here one night, about each of the three, like Tom, Dominic, and Britta, being on the withdrawal study committee, which is the way it would be if it was RSA 195. That did not make it into the amendment. So we tried. So right now, what that means is Thursday of this week, it's on the consent agenda for the Senate. So it's expected to be passed. But now it's not the same bill that came out of the House. See, the House did not amend it. So when that happens, now they, they have to have, the, they call it a committee of conference, and they have to get together and agree. Likely, the House will agree to the amendment. And then if they do, um, both will vote on it again, and then it'll go to the governor. So I've been told that they expect it to get to the governor's desk um, by the middle of June. It'll go, it's, it's going to move pretty quickly. So yeah, so is the committee of conference the whole house? Is it a smaller group? No, it's a smaller group. I'm not quite okay. sure how that's made up. 
but they have a group that gets together and, and reconciles. Right, and reconciles. I mean, that's not the only one. There'll be others right. like that. Yeah. So that's where we are right now. So. I'll call that a 50% victory. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I think that, so it would be March of 2024. They will remain in the SAU the following year. So you have to think about budgeting. I talked about that a little bit here, that yeah. next fall when Robin starts the budget, she has to plan for Bridgewater Hebrew and being with us. And that's the budget for the year after that. So you kind of have to have a year to let things play out. Mm -hmm. And then that'll give them time to do what they need to do to get organized yeah, if it passes. And that's assuming it passes. That's right. right. So then all then, assuming then, it passes. Then what was the amendment that they'd be pulled out of what, of July of 2024? Or Five. would it be 2025? Uh, they, okay. they would remain for one more year. Right. So 20 July 1st of 2025, if it passes the three towns. That's correct. Okay. I and just wanted to, to clarify three, that. three, not just a... Not just like two each of the town three separately has to pass. Yeah. yeah. So if one town votes no, it's, then it's done. Yeah. Do we know is it fifty percent? Yes, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a 50, it's a simple majority. Simple majority got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you for staying on top of all that. No problem. <laughs> all right, board member comments. Anybody have any comments? I just think I just want to make a comment on just as we discuss things like facilities and needs and curriculums and teaching, teaching teachers and so forth is just to keep our eye on the ball around enrollment because it's become kind of a common thing to throw around about how it's a decline. We even heard it this evening, right? A declining enrollment. And then now we're talking about adding a <laughs> kindergarten teacher because of the increasing <laughs> enrollment. And that's going to flow through, obviously. And so I think that's just important. We can't just make an assumption that something is true. We need to just keep our eye on it um, when we're making these decisions because it does frequently, it is yep. frequently thrown out there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about for us. On the same vein of enrollment, I actually had a question about the enrollment numbers that we got with our agenda about the homeschool student data. Are these cumulative numbers, or are these just kiddos that have withdrawn to homeschool this year? It's cumulative, but it but really... Like what period? Because like, it, it just... It, it, it's vague. so... It, it really is hard to track. I, mm -hmm. I know, because, because once they're out, they're out. They're not in your system anymore. Right. So they only, the requirement by law is that they only need to notify us once. So let's say your own child, you decided as a first grader, you have to either notify me or the commissioner of education. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't send us... <laughs> We don't send them stuff. They don't send us stuff. So we don't even know. And then beyond that, so if you and your husband picked up and left and went to Lebanon or something, we have no idea you left. There's no re reporting requirement. In fact, they, Lebanon might not even know they show up. You know, so it's really not. It's so like somebody when I, I remember three years ago when I began working with somebody said, how many homeschool students do you have? I, mean, I have no idea. You have no idea. Because also... Somebody could move in from New Jersey or Pennsylvania and they don't report. They're already homeschooling and they're, you know, so it's really... Well, that's why I asked because yeah. when I work at the middle school, I mean, it feels like 100 years ago now, it's like 10, but we, we kept the kids that would withdraw to homeschool, we kept their file with their class and it kind of moved up along. Yes. Yeah. So we kind of had an idea and sometimes we get a call from Lebanon like hey so and so just enrolled here and they said that you were the last public school do you happen to have a file <laughs> we do and send it off right. sure. but I didn't know so I didn't know if this was like the number of dead files kind so, of going along yeah I'd have to check where how I can find out for you where the number came from because the other thing that changed since then Kim is so in 2013 the homeschool law changed so there used to be a requirement by the parents that they had to, um, their, their child had to come to school for the state testing right. and take assessment. Now there's none of Nothing. that. So there's like, it is, New Hampshire has probably the most liberal homeschooling laws in the whole country. So essentially it's like, we, we have no say in anything and really can't ask what's going on. We're back, before you could say, you know, like, I mean, they would come take the state assessment. At least you would know, like, they were doing something, but Pierre. now it's, it's not. Pierre, so. if they are going to a private school, do you know? No. So it's the same it's thing It's a then. similar process. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, well, no, they you're. Know, like if they went to New Hampton, when I worked at the middle school, I sent a lot of transcripts to New Hampton or to Tilton School. Um, but the file, again, like would move to the high school with their class. Like mm -hmm. yeah. right. yeah. But beyond that, if, if that same student left the private school and went somewhere else, I mean, we don't know that. You have to you know, be a detective trying to try and figure out where the right. kid was left. So no, was. you don't. It's very difficult. Yeah, it's a good question. So that, that's why I asked just because, you know, the number, it creeps up, but I'm like, I don't know where the 24 in September came from. Was it from last right. year? Or is it just... Where I will ask where she got that. Uh, get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other board member comments? Okay. See none. Financial A general assurances. And yeah, I have general assurances here. Both the chair and the superintendent are required to sign them. It's pretty much just um, for all the title grants. We are just saying we have the authority to uh, apply for the title for the federal grants, and we are complying with all the rules and regulations of federal monies. Um, so if you would stay after and initial and sign the numerous pages of these general searches. I would <laughs> appreciate it. All right. That's it. We don't even have to vote on it. No. Nope. It's a requirement that it's on a posted agenda and then it's mentioned in the minutes. <laughs> and we do this every year about this time of year. And it's wet signed. <laughs> no doubt it's signed. <laughs> Melissa and I will sign a initial at the bottom of each page. I think. Yep. Yes. Next, you're up for the locks, the NRH locks. Yep. Um, everyone has a, a new step of the cost, first of all. Um, as you can see down the very bottom, 197. This went through facilities committee. Um, facilities committee members can speak of it. We had a first, uh, we were looking at about $80,000. When they determined that we, it wasn't as expensive as we had thought, they wanted to look at the whole entire high school, just for the high school. Um, they have lots of classroom doors that are not in compliance here due to mechanical failures. Um, and the facilities committee recommended that they replace all necessary hardware. And Jason went out and got this uh, very large, and I have it here someplace, uh, right here from Camco. It's um, about eight, ten pages of every single item that has to be replaced um, or fixed in, in just the high school. So this is just NRH. Yeah, it's just the high school. If you look at the back, did you look at the back? The fire code violation? No, I don't, I don't have that don't one. Have back. Oh, you don't have a back? Oh, I don't have a back. I don't have a back. I have a back on one. It must have been the one I asked you for. Probably. Yeah. Special. I was just reading that one. That was the one. Yep. It's, um, but you can pass the um, block. These are That's federal so This is making all, side, yep, right? this is making all the repairs were appropriate to bring um, this high school into compliance. Um, improve obviously the safety and security of all the students. Um, and just to let you know, the classroom they also have these locks have a um, lifetime warranty, which is a nice thing. Um, and I am looking at we have money available in the ESSER grant. This is, and so this will not be out of the general fund at all, um, but with such a large amount, um, obviously I wanted to bring it before the board to make sure you understand it, agree with it, um, if you have any questions um, regarding it. Um, but I would, I would be, I'm gonna put it into, I would like to put it into the ESSER grant for funding for it and um, be done with this once in a while. Um, the other thing about this is there's keys for the current teachers may have left, um, may have lost them, and this has been going on for multiple years, way past my time even. And so this will give a nice fresh start as um, for good key management of the whole school also. And it gets us up to fire code violations and based on your yeah. fire code violations. Well, and then one of the other things I'm, I'm really pleased about is that the, the classroom doors, the teachers can lock them from the inside without a key. So imagine, you know, a shooter or some kind of an emergency. You know, tell the little kid the bear if it's a bear. Right. <laughs> so now they can just do this yeah. and it's locked. Where in some places you have to go outside mm -hmm. into the hallway. I mean, that's just horrible. So this is really yes. just that in itself to me is yeah. a huge improvement. And then the way Jason Torsi explained it to us, we have uh, doors around here, you know, some of the double doors that just don't work mm -hmm. because we don't have the locking the panic bars that work, and those panic bars are a lot of money, they're very expensive, yeah, so does. they add up very quickly, but it's really a long, long time coming for the high school to get this fixed. Yep. So um, is this at all in response, to, I know we had an audit 
some time back around the safety. Yeah. Is this kind of oh, a follow up to that? I'm sure they've mentioned it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would imagine. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then, um, when would this would this be able to be done in this, this summer? Summertime. Okay. That's what we're shooting for. Yeah. Great. Was um, Jason pretty satisfied with the with the quote, or did, did they want to look into other potential other companies? To um, he was he's been working on this for a, a few years. Okay. And it was just developed into the yep. whole entire school. Yeah. So he's been working with Camco for the okay. past three or four years. So yep. it was where he expected it to be. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any leverage if we need? Do we need any of the same work done at any other schools? I should, maybe the middle school. I don't want to do work on schools that aren't. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, the other schools are in much better shape. Yeah. yeah. This one's okay. pretty awesome. So one at a time. I was just thinking if you know if we had leverage on scale with it for like the middle school, for example. But if that's, we'll just bite this one off for now. Yeah. yeah. So is the yeah. warranty? That's up to be a manufacturer's warranty, not from Campo, just in case businesses turn over, right. they get acquired. Year year. I just want to make sure that was a manufacturer's warranty if it's lifetime. So I can double check that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I need a motion to accept the one hundred ninety-seven dollar, one hundred ninety-seven thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars and five cents quote. Motion to accept. And the yes or funds, sorry. Yes, out of the yes or funds. Yes. Make sure we say that. Second. Out of the yes or funds, you got that. Yep. Okay. That's the fun. <laughs> yeah. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next, Robin, procurement cards. I just wanted to bring this forward. Um, you may or may not recall back on board meeting in December 12th. I'm sure it's all fresh in your minds. Um, we, we wanted a, um, to get a credit card because we had teachers and we had different kind of like professional development and people were using their personal credit cards. Um, and it could be big amounts. And so we wanted to attempt to get a credit card for the um, school. Um, at that time, I thought we were going to go through 2D, and I approached 2D. They gave me the information they wanted. Um, it was it was way too difficult. And um, Keith Pike actually said that's why all the schools just don't don't go through a personal bank like that. Mm -hmm. But he did have a suggestion, which most schools in New Hampshire do, is they go through New Hampshire ASBO, which I'm a part of, um, New Hampshire uh, School Business Association, and. They go through the Bank of Montreal, and so it's a, a much easier process. You don't have to give your firstborn. Um, so I, I do have the application for that. Um, they just require three years of financials, which obviously I will send them, but they do require a, the board share to sign and we get the procurement cards. They call them procurement cards instead of credit cards, but the same thing. Um, still same exact thing. We'll keep probably two within the SAU office and pay the things that you know, not through the vendor ability to pay. Robin, can I suggest City National Commercial as a possible option for you to look at as well? I could, certainly. What, it, what was that City called? National. City National Commercial. Do you have any idea what? I can talk to you after. I can okay. show it to you. Come on. <laughs> Look at anything. <laughs> right. This has been ongoing. But it the is concept is what you're yeah. asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 it's been approved that we do it. I just because we are changing banks and, and we're going to a, a completely different, you know, Bank of Montreal. Obviously, it's not even in the United States. Not that it really matters too much, but I just wanted to let everybody know. But um, I will certainly look at this um, and whichever one. If it doesn't matter to anyone, if this actual procedure has been approved, that I will just pick the best one. And okay. Yeah, because we don't, right, because we just approved the policy, it. yeah. so it's just a change of the company, so yep. you're just letting us know. Okay. okay. Yeah, we don't have to. Okay. All right, anybody have anything else <coughs> before? I need a motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank goodness. Okay.